Welcome to the Gastro Guru New Year's Eve edition. We're gonna be making that elusive Italian dish timpano two ways, pairing it up with three amazing sparkling and grappa cocktails. So, as always, let's start off with the first one. I've got a rose cranberry juice. So that's made from white cranberry and red cranberry. Next, I'm gonna add in Bottega's pomegranate liqueur, and then a slice of caracara orange, this beautiful color. It's got a nice sort of tangerine color to it, and then two slices of Meyer lemon, which has a sweet and also a sour tone, which mixes perfect with this cocktail. I'm gonna shake this bad boy up. And I'm going to pour it into my martini glass. Next, I'm gonna garnish this up with some fresh pomegranate seeds and some goji berries. Now, goji berries have almost like a strawberry kind of flavor to them. And I'm gonna drop a couple of these in. They're great after they've soaked in liquid. Really brings out the texture and the great flavor. There we go. But because it's New Year's Eve, you can't do it without some amazing Prosecco. So I'm gonna show you the correct way to open up a bottle. Always have your hand over top of the cage. Next, we're gonna spin the bottom of the bottle and holding onto the cork with our palm. If we try and spin the cork, you have <laughs> possibly, there we go. We've got the possibility of it shooting between your thumb and your forefinger. So I'm going to layer this on top. And what this is gonna do, it's actually gonna sit on top of the cocktail. So when we're drinking it, the Prosecco stays on top, it slides back and forth. And that really affects your palate because the cocktail is fairly sweet. So when it's going back and forth, we get the sweetness. As the drink goes back, the Prosecco comes forward and that beautiful minerality and soft bubble really cleanses your palate and gets you ready for that next amazing sip. Oh, that is perfect. Oh, great fruitiness, but also super, super refreshing. So you may be asking, what is timpano? Well, let me tell you. Timpano is made up of all the most beautiful things that you could put in pasta or on a pizza. And you're gonna see exactly what I mean. But first we've gotta make our mini meatballs that go into this beautiful dough drum. So I've got the holy trinity of meats here. I've got veal, pork, and beef. Next, I'm gonna add in a nice mixture of actual fresh herbs and dry herbs, and a little bit of Montreal steak spice. So we're gonna mix up the fresh and the dried herbs. You really wanna do that nice combination to give a great balance of flavor for these mini meatballs. Next, I've got some beautiful garlic, but not any kind of garlic, roasted garlic. This is like butter. So you drop it into your oven with some olive oil, wrap it in tin foil, and then these great chunks come out like garlic butter. This is a, such a soft, beautiful flavor. The aromatics are absolutely incredible. So we're gonna add in a full clove. Plus by getting this beautiful consistency, it's gonna help to keep our our meatballs together. It is a little bit messy, I will say that, but it is well worth it. Oh, this is just gorgeous. The, the aromatics truly are incredible. So I'm gonna add this in, and so that's a full clove of garlic. I'm gonna be using two eggs and adding in just a portion of them until we see sort of what the consistency looks like with the actual meatballs. So I'm gonna beat this up like you do. And I'm sure you're eyeing all the rest of the ingredients. We've got roasted red peppers, yellow peppers, heirloom tomatoes, braised mushrooms, porchetta, and everything. You're gonna love this dish. It does take time, but let me tell you, it's well worth it. Okay, so let's pour that in. So I'll only put in about half the egg mixture. I'm gonna mix this up, and you really wanna make sure that it's well combined. Also, bring the meat to room temperature. This is gonna help to be able to figure out exactly how dry or how moist the mixture is before you start making them. The last thing you want is dried meatballs because they'll wind up cracking. We're gonna fry these up with some grappa and a little bit of olive oil, and we're gonna make them into probably walnut-sized meatballs. So not too crazy. 
and not too big. And they take only about three minutes to roll them around in the pan. And that looks pretty darn good. So basically, we're just gonna start to move these guys around. And you don't wanna over mix. And there we go, there's our first one. And we're just gonna keep on continuing until we use up all of the meat. So again, you just want it to be about an inch and a half in diameter. You wanna make sure that they're all around the same size so that the cooking time is the same. And we're gonna cook them until they're about medium rare, dropping them into the tympano. Now, we're doing all these different layers and cooking it for about two hours. That's why we're doing it medium rare. We don't want these guys to dry out and overcook. Okay, so I'm gonna continue doing this and then we're gonna drop it into some grappa and olive oil. So I've already lined our pot with aluminum and uh, Timpano is a cruel mistress. She uh, teaches you something new every single time you try and make the recipe. And I learned to line the pot so that if the dough sticks, you just peel off the aluminum foil instead of it sticking to the pot and breaking. So that way you make sure that it gets a full release. So I'm just rolling this out so that the dough is even because we want a nice even cooking surface. Don't worry if it's a little bit misshapen like mine is, that's okay. The biggest thing is you wanna get all those air bubbles out and then we're gonna fold it in and put it into the pot. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna add a little bit of flour to this just so it doesn't stick because you're gonna see. We're gonna fold it like this, put it off to the side, put our pot in and here we go. This is so important. So we wanna make sure that we're stretching the dough, but not stretching it too much. It needs to relax and go into the bottom of the pot. And so you wanna give it some nice room because when we're filling up all those amazing layers of toppings and delights, that it's not going to tear all of our dough. So here we go. So I'm just moving this around, making it nice. And we also need to seal it up. So it's gonna stretch a bit. And we've got lots of excess here, which is great. That's exactly what you want. You'd rather have too much than not enough. So the dough looks perfect, and now we're gonna start building our tympano. So first we're gonna start doing layers of salami. And this is gonna help to protect any sort of oozing, and also it'll crispen up the dough from both sides because of the fat on the actual cold cuts. So I'm using a Genoa salami, which is mild and just has some nice peppercorns in here. And this is gonna give such terrific flavor. And again, this is a beautiful little tip for making this thing happen. So I've got it placed right in, and next we're putting in our ravioli. Yes, I did tell you this is gonna be filled with the most beautiful things. So I've got sugar, leek, and onion, as well as mushroom ravioli. And I'm just gonna line the bottom of the pot with these beautiful little pieces of pasta. And I'm just gonna make sure that we've got it right up in these. This is a great step to do, is to add the pasta in first because it helps to push the dough right up against the sides of the pot, which is exactly what we want. The whole thing about this is like making a layer cake. We wanna get all of the air out of there and make it nice and dense. But you're gonna be amazed at how light it actually is when you break into it. So I'm just pushing these guys in here and now we can really start to see our tympano take shape. Beautiful. Next, add in some sauce. So just put in your favorite tomato sauce. I've got a nice herbed basil pasta sauce. I'm gonna put in about a ladle and a half and just moving that around so that everything is well covered and we can start building our layers. So as we go, again, we're gonna be pushing down and pushing down. So the next item we're gonna be using is we're gonna be putting in some fresh basil. And you wanna make sure that you really have some fresh basil leaves that are nicely washed and are gonna be nice and fragrant. Next, I'm gonna add in some 
braised mushrooms. These guys look awesome. You wanna make it chunky because when you cut into it, you wanna see all the bisections and the layers. So I'm gonna add all of this in. Boom, boom, boom. Now I've got a blend of cheeses. I'm using provolone and some pecorino as well as a little bit of Parmesan. So I'm gonna throw in some cubes again. We want to pack these guys in here, spread them around liberally, and I've got them all mixed up so we're getting beautiful blending of flavors of cheese. You know, when you get those great blends of shredded cheese for pizza, it just brings out such great flavors. And that's exactly what we want for this beautiful dish. Add in a little bit more here. So boom, we've got that. That is looking terrific. Now I'm gonna add on some more of the salami. So we start filling in those gaps on the wall of the tympano. And we just wanna keep on adding these guys in as we go. Again, this makes such a huge difference. Every time I make tympano, I learn new tricks. You gotta innovate, otherwise you wind up stagnant. Don't you like that? Some good alliteration there. My philosophy teachers would be very, very proud of me right now. So here we go. I've got this going in here and I'm just gonna warm up that side. Beautiful. This is really coming together nicely. Beautiful tympano, you gotta show it some love. Okay, next I've got some grilled chicken. So I've already marinated this chicken, grilled it up, and I'm gonna press it down and place it in to be able to pull everything together. We want to make sure that we're really compressing here, guys. This is what's going to help to make a beautiful tympano. And I know I'm sure you're already thinking, oh my, we've got beautiful ravioli, grilled chicken, Genoa salami. We've got mushrooms. We've got cheese. We've got sauce. We've got dough. This is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And that's why I thought when I first saw this too. We need a little bit more chicken in the center there. And then boom, onto the next layer. So we're gonna be putting in some caramelized red onion. Putting this in here. And I'm gonna be doing a duo. We're gonna add in some tomatoes as well. So I've got some beautiful heirloom tomatoes. And again, just pressing it all down into that dough. We want to make sure that there aren't any air pockets. And next, let's add in some more salami around the sides. See, this is going to make sure that you have a very lucky new year. We can always use luck, right guys? And we're putting it onto the sides. This is looking dreamy, and just the aromas are incredible. Oh, I'm getting excited. This is so awesome. I love making this dish. It just takes a little bit of prep and a little bit of know-how, but hey, it is well worth it. Here we go. I'm just going to tuck this in underneath the veggies, and there we go. Have another sip. Because now we're going to put in the meatballs. So we've got these beautiful meatballs and these guys, as I said, are medium rare because we don't want them to dry out and we actually want a little bit of that fat in there to be able to help to congeal and keep everything contained into this beautiful cake of goodness. And with the meatballs, I'm adding in more cheese. This is gonna help to provide a really nice stabilizing layer and when we cut into it, you're gonna see such great color. So we're pressing all of this in. Okay, so now we're gonna be putting in the porchetta. So pressing this in, I'm gonna trim it off a little bit so it fits in beautifully. And again, we're needing this layer to really press on everything. And we just have a little bit of space on one side here. So you're gonna press that in, fits perfectly. So again, we wanna make sure that we're getting all of that air out. This is looking terrific. Next, I've got a duo of fire roasted yellow, red, and hot peppers. So I'm gonna pour that in here. And then 
the last layer of ravioli. But what I'm gonna do is just put in a couple in here, and I didn't add any olive oil, so that's why it's sticking, because otherwise you're gonna get slippage when it cooks. So I'm gonna add in some more cheese. And then some sauce. So here we go, and we've got extra sauce here because you serve it up with a nice healthy dollop of sauce on the side. And we'll smear that around. Yes, I'm gonna get a little bit messy right now. So I'm gonna add in some more ravioli, and this is what's gonna protect the dome. So I'm gonna move this around and get this all nicely combined. This thing looks beautiful. So it really isn't that tough to do. It just takes time to be able to prep and get the whole thing together and make sure that you learn your lessons from the Italian temptress, Timpano. Here we go. Oh my goodness. Get all of that in. That looks awesome. So now I'm just gonna use up the rest of the salami. And another little tip. I've got some beaten egg yolk. And we're gonna pour just a little bit of that on here. Just a little. We don't need to make an omelet. And next, we're gonna put the dough together to form the top crust. So you wanna stretch it a bit because it's been sitting there and gravity's been doing its thing. And as we work, we're gonna wanna add in a little bit more egg yolk on here, just to make sure that everything joins together nicely. So the oven's heating up at 385. This is gonna take about two hours, but don't worry. You're not gonna have to wait two hours to see this finished product. This guy's gonna come together, and I've got a dessert timpano and two more cocktails coming up. Now, this is exactly what we want, a nice big fold. So I'm gonna use that at the end and pour this in. So there we go. See how I'm forming that and just getting those corners together. It's the egg wash that's gonna act like a glue and bond everything. And that's what we want. We want a nice tight seal and then dropping this over. Don't stretch too much. Just kind of feel it, be friends with the dough, see what's going on, feeling it, feeling it, feeling it. Give it a nice little tap. Like playing the bongos. By the way, I used to be a professional drummer. Here we go. I'm just gonna add a little bit of egg wash on there, again, just to keep it all together. And add a little bit of foil. Actually, we might have enough to cover the entire top. This way the top doesn't cook too fast and we're gonna pop it into the oven. It doesn't need to be totally firm, but you know what? I might add a little bit more. I'll see how that cooks. Guys, our first timpano, dessert timpano coming up and two more cocktails in espresso old fashioned and a beautiful pistachio chocolate martini. So our timpanos in the oven, we're gonna be making our espresso old fashioned now. I used to make these for my uncle and I always remember that he would fall asleep after drinking it. So that's why I decided to come up with a beautiful espresso version. So we've got two ounces of bourbon in here. I'm gonna add in a couple of little dashes of orange bitters and then Bottega espresso. So you're gonna add this over top. That's gonna to provide the sweetness and then topping it off with a blackberry and strawberry skewer just to get it nice and chilled and build those great aromatics. Oh, and the bourbon and espresso just taste so good together. And then with the dark fruits of the strawberry and blackberry. Oh, that's a cocktail that's gonna keep you going, which is fantastic. So now we're gonna make our beautiful dessert timpano. So I've got some puff pastry in a ramekin. I'm gonna place this inside and we're gonna make a layered dessert here. Now I'm not a huge baker, but I came up with this recipe and it really, I mean, it's so easy and it comes out perfectly every single time. So we've got some puff pastry in here and again, just like it with the tin pano, just let the dough relax so it fills all of the sides. We're gonna to try to make it so it's just two folds of pastry 
and then we're gonna start adding in. So I've got some banana in here. Now I actually heated up the banana a bit so it would get nice and moist and make a nice little, almost like a jelly. Next, I'm gonna add in some semi-sweet chocolate. This is very, very important. Don't do a dark, sweet chocolate. Make sure that it's semi-sweet, otherwise it just becomes overpowering. I'm gonna pat this in and make a nice little layer. Next, I'm gonna add in some lady fingers. So I've got some Bottega Pistachio. This liqueur is awesome. I've chilled it a bit to make it nice and thick. And I'm just gonna place in our lady fingers to make a nice little layer, sort of like what we were doing with our tympano with the chicken, the porchetta, except this is a beautiful pistachio cookie that we're making here. And I've got a little bit left, so I'm just gonna split this guy, soak it up, and put this in. This is gonna give some really great flavor. I mean, pistachios, chocolate, banana, and then with the espresso and the bourbon, come on, this is awesome. Next, I'm gonna add in some white chocolate chips, some strawberry, and the reason why I just added in that chocolate is just to help to adhere the strawberries to the ladyfinger. And again, you wanna press that in. I'm gonna add in some more chocolate on top. And again, we're looking for some beautiful colors and layers. And then some walnuts to finish it off. This is gonna give it a nice little bit of crunch and also help to soak up any of the moisture as it starts to cook. Now you can't do this as a layer cake. A lot of people have asked me if you could do this sort of like a, in a big sheet like lasagna, but you can't. Because of the strength, the tensular strength, if you will, of the puff pastry, it winds up breaking. So we don't want to do that. And also you need to keep it dry, otherwise it just gets mushy and then it never cooks in the center. So we're going to fold this up and it's moist enough so I know that it's all going to come together. We don't really need to put in egg wash, but you can if you want, if you find that your puff pastry is dry, but you can see how moist this is. So we're going to be just fine. Just gonna smooth it out so it looks nice. And then I'm gonna pop this in the oven at 410 for 25 minutes and we've got a beautiful dessert tympano. I'm gonna have this and then we're gonna do our beautiful reveal and one more cocktail. So it's the final reveal and we're doing our last cocktail. I've got some beautiful Bottega pistachio chocolate milk which I'm gonna to add to the last shooter. Now you wanna make sure that all the ingredients are ice cold. That way they're gonna layer on top of each other nicely. And then topping it up with the double chocolate. This is amazing. And this is such a great way to finish off a beautiful New Year's Eve. And everything is lit. We've got the dessert tympano, and then we're gonna cut the big tympano. Here we go, guys. I told you, she's a cruel mistress, but I think we've got it. So I'm just cutting through. You gotta have a very sharp knife. And, here we go. Do we have it? Is this gonna be a fabulous New Year's? I think it's going to be, folks. Just wanna make sure we got it all the way cut through. So, as I always say, keep cooking. Keep shaking, and may the force of the tympano mm -hmm. be with you all. Happy New Year from the Gastro Guru. Mm -hmm.